on. Yep, we are all set. If you are ready. Hi, well, welcome everyone uh, to the monthly session of the coordinator research coordinator enrichment series uh, hosted by the CTSI. So this is in addition to a bunch of other educational offerings that we have. Uh, a lot of them are geared towards research coordinators. So please look up our website and see if uh, you'd be interested in attending any of the other ones. Uh, today's topic is investigator initiated trials. It's definitely a kind of a black hole sort of a topic in terms of what all can go into starting our trial. Uh, that's an IIT. Uh, different setups require different skill sets. Uh, we obviously can't cover all those in one hour, but we do have Shar here who claims who has years and years of experience in anything clinical research. So we're going to put her to the test today. And uh, Shar has been with the CTO for about 10 years yep. and at MCW for about 25, 25 only. <laughs> uh, and she's just getting warmed up. So... Strap in and let's listen to Shar and what she's got to say. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for a wonderful introduction, Amit. You can always count on me. Yes, uh, yes I am Shar Kutz. I am uh, one of the directors for the Clinical Trials Office, uh, the CTSI Clinical Trials Office. Um, I am in charge of uh, QAQI and education. And I am going to talk about investigator initiated initiated trials. Uh, I am going to give more of a, a high level overview. Um, my work with investigator initiated trials, IITs, usually is on the monitor or auditing end. Um, I'm usually not the person that helps begin one, but we are going to talk about what's needed and what, uh, what needs to be done. Um, and there are multiple places where you can get um, assistance if needed for these types of trials. So what exactly is investigator initiated trial? So an investigator-initiated trial is a trial where the investigator, principal investigator, uh, he comes up with the idea, he comes up with the, um, uh, the, the, the how the data is going to be analyzed, he comes up with all of that um, instead of a pharmaceutical sponsor. Now, a pharmace pharmaceutical company might sponsor the trial, they might uh, provide some money, or they might provide the drug being used. Uh, but there are a number of ways that the PI can get um, funding. It could be, again, through the pharmaceutical companies. It could be through an NIH grant. It could be institution or departmental um, or any other type of grant. So again, uh, not AT, the clinical trial where a principal investigator conceives the research, develops the protocol, and serves as the sponsor. Uh, again, he's not only the investigator at the site, but he's also the sponsor for other sites. And uh, the IITs are viewed um, as a way to get uh, additional knowledge on certain drugs and how they um, act out in the real world. Okay, so example of IITs using drugs, uh, and I have only reviewed IITs using drugs, but not um, used, done any reviews of trial. Okay, so the IITs can be done uh, pre-market, looking at a different population, different dosing scheme, uh, different drug combinations, or they can be done post-market, uh, new use for currently marketed drugs, uh, comparison to other marketed drugs, a different population, a different in dosing regimen. Uh, they're also, I uh, had some examples, but they're not exactly uh, IITs, but they're drugs that were used for a different uh, purpose, one of them being uh, alitamide, and it was uh, developed as a sedative, and then the uh, physicians realized that it would help uh, expected mothers to prevent nausea. Um, however, there was the, uh, the horrible side effect of um, uh, children and baby born with abnormalities. However, what they did find out is that it was a good treatment for leprosy. So that was a new use for it. Also, um, tamoxifen, that was a hormone therapy to treat breast cancer, or cancer that is spread to other parts of the body in both women and men. Um, however, they did uh, find that it was very good at treating bi bipolar disorder, um, especially when the patient's going to overdrive from the manic phase. Okay, so who is involved in IIT? 
So again, the individual roles of investigator and sponsors are still present in an IIT. Since the investigator is uh, assuming both roles, uh, the regulatory requirements from both roles will be upon them. Um, as the investigator at the site, uh, he is responsibility um, are the same as any other clinical trial. They are to ensure that the clinical trial is conducted according to all the regulations, the protocol, the IRB, uh, Food and Drug Administration, and that they are protecting the rights, safety, and welfare of the subjects, and also controlling the use of the investigational product. As sponsor, they do assume the role as any other sponsor. Um, for example, they would have to um, they initiate the clinical trial, they act as the coordinating center, uh, they find the uh, other sites for participation, they also manage the money and pay the sites, and they also have um, oversight of the uh, regulatory uh, tasks that are performed by the other sites. Okay, so responsibilities of a sponsor investigator. And there, there is no light version of the uh, responsibilities for the sponsor for IIT. Uh, it isn't because the person's doing it, they don't have to have delegation of authority, they don't have to have this, they don't have to have that. That is incorrect. They still need to have all of this. Uh, again, they develop the study protocol, um, they select the qualified sites, they maintain the essential, essential documents for all sites, uh, even if the, um, the sites have their own IRB approval, the uh, investigator sponsor needs to obtain those documents and hang on to those. Um, also, delegation of authority logs, they need to uh, look at those and make sure those are up to date. They need to make sure that um, the monitors are adhering to good clinical practice and the coordinators, and that uh, the investigator would hold the uh, or produce the um, investigator brochure. He would supply the study product and monitors the quality of the data. And then again, uh, report on any safety issues. So as the investigator, just as any other investigator for a clinical trial, they you know, um, need to review the study protocol. And this would also be for investigators at outside sites that are not the sponsor. To review the study protocol, to um, determine whether or not it's feasible, and make sure that their staff is here, adhering to good clinical practice. Um, they have to review the investigator brochure. They have to supervise randomization, administration of product, adherence and uh, deposition of the product, submit invoices to the lead site, and then supervise the conduct of the study, uh, monitors the safety and notifies the sponsor. And again, this is the responsibility of any uh, additional sites as well as the responsibility of the lead investigator. Also, one of the things that is um, needed is for example, they would need to have uh, documentation of training on the protocol, and this would include uh, this would include having a training log that not only includes the um, um, initial training for the protocol, but also any amendments. And we have uh, a copy of a log, such a log, in the box if you want to take a look at that. Uh, we've also put in the box a copy of a delegation of authority log as well as a minute here, so training. But other than Sarah's gonna look it up for me. Yeah, and I dropped the, the link for box also today in the chat. Okay. Okay, so how do you create an IIT? Okay, well the first thing is you have to think of an idea. You have to come up with a research question. You know, start with clear and focused questions. What are you going to look at? How are you going to look at it? Read any previous literature that's available um, to get a thorough knowledge of um, what is going on with that drug or that treatment. And then you have to design the study. Uh, what are the study visits going to look like? What is drug administration going to look like? Um, develop an outline protocol, including, you know, all the inclusion exclusion uh, information, all of the study visits, um, and that includes all of that. And also um, what you're looking for is an outcome. Funding. Uh, funding can be one of the hardest parts of the uh, investigator initiated trial. Um, seems like pharmaceutical companies have a lot of money to conduct studies. However, 
um, unfortunately, the investigator initiated trials don't have it as much. Um, again, there are certain pharmaceutical companies that will sponsor a trial uh, for a certain amount of money. If uh, their drug is being used, uh, they might supply money or they might supply drug or both. Um, yes. well, maybe it just came top of mind. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, okay. Madeline Barrett is here also. She is um, uh, uh, I deal with a lot of these. <laughs> a lot of them. I, my experience is more so on the grant side of things. So often, depending, I guess maybe it depends on your PI or how you're being looped into an IIT. Um, often the grant and the budget is finalized before you get looped in. And unless your PI is proactive and uh, is budgeting for coordinator time, a lot of times the budget's the budget and it's very much like a, you know, make it work situation. So right. things to be aware of if an IIT is being placed upon you, um, maybe if you don't normally, you're not normally in like the, you know, funding side of things. Um, you don't deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. I would strongly encourage being clued into what is available. For example, you know, your PI writes this wonderful um, IIT, maybe it's not a drug, but they're like, oh, we're gonna be using the truth and we're gonna be using this and we're gonna be using that. And they have, some of them have no idea that all of those have separate startup fees, which normally you account for in the budgeting process from start to finish when you're doing a sponsor, you know, study. Um, excuse me, sponsor funded study, not IIT. <laughs> uh, but often that those things get overlooked. And I many times have been looped into, like we only have like 20K for a coordinator over the course of a five-year study. You really can't do a lot with that. <laughs> um, so, or, or just for, you know, miscellaneous things, like, you know, depending on enrollment. So something too, if you hear rumblings of an IIT coming in your department or with the PI that you work with, really advocate for, um, at least be included in a little bit so that when you go to maybe help with the startup process, you're not shocked and you can manage expectations. Right. And there are a number, a number of uh, resources at the medical college to help develop an IIT. Uh, there's always, you know, the Office of Research, uh, the Cancer Center, Clinical Trials Office, uh, CTSI Clinical Trials Office, Department of Medicine Clinical Trials Office, a number of resources. But as Madeline mentioned, um, oftentimes we as coordinators don't get looped in right away, and we get brought in uh, once it's time to start submitting to the IRB. And after that, usually budget's been finalized, and yeah, it could uh, lead to some underfunding. So again, as part of the IIT, uh, they want to, you know, uh, design the study, you know, the methodology, who's going to be uh, included, the patient population, what the intervention is going to be, and they also want to look at funding. Uh, then they need, again, to look at all potential cost, uh, personnel, equipment, um, participant compensation, um, startup costs for the different areas. Um, all of those have to be looked at, and. Again, help can be found uh, for, for doing that. And they have to identify their funding source. Where are they getting money? Um, usually the, uh, the investigator will have an idea before he approaches um, a pharmaceutical company or any other funding and says, hey, this is my idea. I want money to do it. Works much better than going to the company saying, give me a lot of money because I want to do something. Mm -hmm. So again, you have to have um, you know, your, the amount and your protocol and everything set. You also have to be aware um, the lead investigator, uh, the lead site, is also has to um, oversee regulatory approvals. And this means not only submission to the IRB uh, for review, but also to ensure that all the other sites have submitted to their IRB if they need to, and that they are also following following the re relevant um, regulations. Then there's also the study startup, the site preparation. Uh, it usually this again happens after the study has um, already been funded, and now they're looking for someone to do it. And um, they, the study site needs to be prepared, staff needs to be trained, and uh, ne necessary equipment needs to be purchased. And also, <coughs> what is your recruitment strategy going to be? Again, just like in uh, any other pharmaceutical uh, company, a trial. 
then there's the study activation. You want to make sure that um, the study is activated at your site. Not only that, you are the um, sponsor for the other sites to activate their sites. And just as a pharmaceutical rep, you want to make sure that all their approvals are in place, that their staff is trained on the protocol, and that they are good to go. The uh, PI is also responsible for the data analysis and, and also for um, disseminating that data. Okay, so what are the burdens of um, being of an IIT? Okay, so uh, for an IIT, especially if a drug is being used, um, the FDA um, regulations have to be followed, as well as the common rule uh, set forth by the DHHS. So again, the investigator needs to know both of those and needs to know if the study are, is bound by them and to make sure that they are in compliance with that. And when the um, uh, Health and Human Services is involved, or any of its agencies are providing the funding, uh, then it has to be compliant with the common rule. And if there is a drug that is um, uh, overseen by the FDA, then the FDA has uh, regulations have to be followed also. And then if neither of these apply, there is still the, um, the IRB regulations that need to be followed. Okay, so the, the rule that um, from uh, the rules, the rules of these regulatory regulatory burdens and the burdens themselves can be somewhat uh, hard to understand. Uh, for example, uh, part of the um, responsibility is to make sure that your study is monitored. Uh, in the protocol, there should be a monitoring plan, um, what how it's going to be reviewed, how often it's going to be reviewed, and then also to make sure that the monitor is actually doing that, um, going to the different sites or remote monitoring. Um, to make sure that they are um, you know, following the protocol, uh, to make sure um, that things are being done according to the protocol. Uh, also, the investigator, if the drug is being used for a different, uh, different purpose, uh, even though it has an, I, an IND, investigational new drug um, um, allowance, he might need to, he or she might need to get another one for that specific use. So even though the study, again, might be FDA approved, I'm sorry, the drug, if it's being used for a different uh, purpose, uh, IND will most likely be necessary. And again, there are places, um, you know, uh, resources at MCW that can help you with INDs. And then also you want to make sure, that, again, not only the monitoring, but the safety reporting is being done. You want to make sure that the, uh, the outside site are giving you the information on all of the safety so that you can submit that to the, um, the um, people that it's not only are there challenges to the investigator, but there are also challenges for the IRB. Um, one of the biggest challenges from the IRB that I understand from talking to my friends is that the uh, protocols are incomplete, scientifically inadequate, underpowered, um, no way this is going to fly. And so the, the primary benefit of the IRB are their primary concern is patient safety and, uh, and risk versus benefits. Uh, quite often, um, the benefits for an IIT are targeted at a certain um, condition or a certain audience. And so they have to look at that, whether or not that would actually be a benefit to that group. Uh, usually with IITs, and Matthew might be able to address this, there are quite a few modification requests <laughs> from, the, uh, from the IRB. Uh, I have um, only done one of these, and I believe the first round came back with 50 some um, modification requests. Yeah. And so, uh, so again, the IRB must um, determine the regulatory status of the product. Medical devices require IRB to review significant risk and, and to this and not significant risk. Okay, the, the device may be uh, an, an exception. Okay, so likewise with the FDA regulated drugs, there may be some exemption from an IND, and that will be one of the things that is determined when you are uh, preparing your protocol. So what are the challenges of an IIT? Okay, so you would start with a, a beautiful green tree that you bring into your house and you want everyone to admire it. It's gonna be so pretty. 
and you put the, everyone in the family wants to put an ornament on it. Uh, however, over the years, but no one wants to take any ornaments off. And so now you have a very, um, a tree that's impossible to look at and impossible to follow. And a protocol can happen just that same way. Uh, when you're developing a protocol or when the PI is, they um, always a good advice to get other eyes to look at it, uh, to get other professionals, uh, perhaps the, you know other colleagues to take a look. Um, however, the IIT then starts growing with each additional question, with each um, additional advice to the point that sometimes you don't even know what the original question is because it's gone out so far. Okay, so some of the challenges of uh, an IIT, uh, inadequate support, and that can be um, not determining ahead of time how much staff you will need um, or uh, support from the, from the company, from the institution. Um, are they going to assist you with writing the um, protocol and with obtaining the funding? Are they going to assist you with the statistical planning? Um, also the study execution. Does Stewart Institute or um, have any means of supporting you for this IIT? Fortunately, at the medical college, there are quite a few resources that can help with that. Inadequate design. No matter um, how well attended the investigator is, sometimes it's just hard to put down on, in words what it is they want to do. Um, or it could be that it's not powered well enough to get their study endpoints, uh, or it's not going to be carried out in a reasonable amount of time. It's not practical. You know, we want to enroll 500 patients in the next six months to look at this. Um, chances are that's not going to happen. Um, and again, so they're looking for, you know, a well-designed um, study. And again, funding. The funding sources could include the NIH, pharmaceutical companies, uh, grants, as Madeline mentioned. It could be from the institution. It could be from the uh, department. It could be um, um, with a certain time limit. You know, they'll give you this amount of money for this for you to do work within this amount of time. And when that time is up, it's done. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the with some uh, investigators, it has been known that the money, the amount of time will run out before the uh, study is actually up and running. So that unfortunately does happen. So again, uh, as coordinators, we want to make sure that we are helping our investigators uh, as much as we can. Uh, again, it is their responsibility, but you know, with us knowing what needs to be done, we can certainly be a big help to them. Um, funding can be, again, from the institution. Uh, from pharmaceutical companies, from grants, from the NIH. Um, it could be from any of those. Uh, and if they are from, you know, a sponsored pharmaceutical study, they still have to write reports. They have to let the pharmaceutical company, everyone know what is going on, how the study is progressing. Okay, this I like it. Okay, as a medical researcher, what my friends do, my friends think that I'm, you know, sitting by... I, uh, microscopes all day and I'm researching all of this and I'm doing such a great job. What my children think I do or what my dogs think I do is just you know, move around, leave home, not come back for a while. Um, lab head thinks that um, I'm just playing around all day. And what I know I'm doing is climbing a slippery slope all the time. <laughs> and then what I actually do is a lot of um, paperwork. And why I do it, of course, is to benefit the, um, the subjects. And I know this is a shortened version, a shortened presentation of what we normally um, present. However, I would like to open it up uh, to others who have actually uh, worked with IITs that can offer their experience or um, additional information. Anyone? Or any, or any questions, of course. Or any questions. Yeah. Questions yeah. first, otherwise I'm just going to go. So you're talking about adequate funding. Yeah. What are the recourses you could take once you've started a project, now you realize you need more money? What happens? Well, you can go back to the original funder to see, and they will provide more money. Um, or you can look for so other... You can go back to the NIH? Right. Depends. Oh, no, not to the... Oh. Depends on the funder. 
So it yeah. depends on the funder, depends on the grant. Going back for more money, good luck. Um, more likely than not, what you're going to have to do, which I've never seen it honestly really not done, is a no-cost extension. Um, but all of this has to come from your PI. So, you know, they're the ones who are in charge of managing your finances. Maybe sometimes if you're a program manager out there, you do, you wear all of the hats. Uh, so you are the one also managing the grant cycles at the same time and keeping everyone on track with reporting. Uh, in my experience, um, when it comes to IITs, is the non-industry side of things. So like the NIH, um, American Heart Association, or any of the other entities, they care a lot if you're on target or not because they are not afraid to pull funding. So there's a lot more pressure when it comes to reporting timelines and being on target, which goes back then to making sure that your protocol is actually feasible to hit those targets. But a lot of times other people, instead of getting more funding, if you're already up and running and it's inadequately funded, maybe it's okay, what can we parse out uh, and trim down for the protocol so that we really are hitting power and accrual goals. Um, but otherwise, a lot of times it's a no cost extension for that reporting period. And Amit, I actually know that you are experienced in this. So why don't you give us some information <laughs> as to what's done uh, if someone is running out of money for a study that's been funded? I got done, so I can give out. <laughs> <laughs> money, okay. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, you guys hit the right points. Uh, I think, yes, uh, going and seeking additional funding is always an option. Nobody can stop you from doing that. Uh, also, I think a lot of times uh, PIs might be kind of tunnel vision to exclude some of the locally available funding. Like AHW is a great resource and they have funding going on through the year. Uh, and every year they have new opportunities. So those, those are really good opportunities as supplemental funding, uh, CTSI provides funding almost every year in some uh, shape or form. So those avenues should be ex uh, explored, especially if you're looking for supplemental funding. Going back to, I think your original funder for additional dollars is probably not a great idea. Uh, you just have to tap into a new resource and see what is available. But I think it always comes back to the same point where when you are submitting your initial grant, really, really do a good thorough job of uh, making sure everything is there. Uh, get some experienced people on the team uh, involved early on. They might not be involved in so much on the science part, but on the operations part, on the finance part, it is always good to get more people involved and have some, uh, you know, run, run your proposals by them, run your budgets by them, run uh, your plan by them. And even operationally, uh, IIT is one of the big problems we see is excessive collection of data. Uh, PIs tend to think, you know what, I'm going to do this. Might as well collect 10 additional data points while I'm at it, because then I don't want to write another grant in case the outcomes for this grant doesn't work out. That seems okay in the you know, bigger picture, but actually what that leads to is a lot more effort and a lot more uh, uh, headache essentially, because now you have a whole bunch of data that do not talk to your primary endpoint or even to your secondary endpoints. And uh, you're just wasting a bunch of time and money collecting that data, managing that data. And you know more data also means more errors in that data. So you're again spending time and effort trying to correct all those uh, on the back end. Uh, so I think getting stats involved, biostats people involved is extremely important right up top because they will give you exactly the data points you need to collect to get to your primary and secondary endpoints. And uh, all the federal, especially the federal funding agencies now are extremely, uh, like they're watching with the eagle eye, to your point, Madeline, on the deliverables. Mm -hmm. And so if you are just gonna go out there and start collecting a whole bunch of data that is just like, eh, you are gonna fall behind. That's never a good idea. Yeah, right. And quite often the uh, funder will have certain endpoints, time points that need to be met before mm -hmm. you receive money. You know, we'll send you money after you enroll the first 50 patients or after the first six months or whatever. So yeah. they do have um, deadlines and timelines on that. And if you don't meet those deadlines, uh, they can pull funding. Um, 
also important to note that quite often, um, unless you have a very strong financial team behind you, the investigator might think, okay, they only want to pay me this much, but that's okay. And no, that's not okay because bills have to be paid. Um, you know, startup costs have to be covered. Um, so don't let your investigator, if that's who you're working with, just say, okay, just go ahead and accept their budget because everything's okay. Always had to have it looked at by a professional who can give them, you know, advice. There's some comments, I think. I was just waiting for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whenever you're ready, I can read. There's a couple right. questions right. in the chat. Um, the first one. A lot of the IIT studies I've been a part of seem to change continuously, differ from the protocol goals and activities. Uh, uh, Who polices this? Oh, uh, should be coordinated. Should have to be oh. us, but often it is. Yeah. Um, I think the best way it's hmm, if you're not there from protocol development and you don't really have an honest, open, very close relationship with your PI, this is kind of inevitable. Yeah, it will happen, and I think it takes a very strong exercise in professional communication skills yes. because to the PI, you know, this is like some, you know, one of their great ideas. They're really excited about pursuing this opportunity. And in a way, when you're telling them that like constantly, this isn't feasible, this isn't working, it can come off as like your idea is not valid. Um, but it is true. They tend to, as Shar's example, add on different ornaments. And you look back and you're like, what are we, what are we doing here? I'm involved in a couple studies like that right now. Um, I think it is uh, ways to avoid or to try and cap it is having, having, excuse me, open communication with the team. So like weekly meetings with different groups as needed. Um, if you need to, for example, if it is like involving human subjects, you're consenting patients, I think trying to focus the group back on what is the patient burden we're putting here if we're adding more and more to the table, um, or is this just because to a mid's point, we want another study, we're adding another study endpoint because we have another sub investigator who's really interested in this niche data point. So trying to bring it back to, okay, well, I just want to remind everyone that our primary endpoint is feasibility. Or, you know, let's like go over and try and maybe restructure your team meetings to get back to it. It is a very strong muscle in communication. If they're, if you're in a situation also where you don't feel comfortable talking to the PI about this, seek other people in your, you know, your manager or department lead um, to maybe loop them into the team as well. I have five years of experience. I have no issue telling a PI, no, this isn't feasible for these three reasons. We're moving on. Not everyone might feel comfortable approaching a PI that way. Um, so if it is really a situation where like, I'm uncomfortable as a coordinator, I feel like lines are being crossed, then please, you know, seek out a support from those around you, um, especially your direct managers. And on the monitoring side, um, quite often, I will um, find a, that study visits aren't being performed the way they were written in the protocol. And when I question it, I'll be told, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Well, <laughs> according to your protocol, you're doing it for safety reasons. So why do you not need it anymore? And why is there not an amendment to the IRB? Um, so again, I think sometimes um, there's a good little lax around IITs because they think that, well, the investigator's running it. He can kind of do what he wants. Um, but no, there are rules and regulations that still need to be followed. The other question, um, somebody had asked to talk more about the no cost extension yeah. and what that all entails. There was a response I do want to read. Somebody else responded um, and said a year past the expiration date of the award or project. Uh, my last studies grant was funded 2018 to 2023 and we're currently in a no cost extension. You apply for this, meaning you can continue for another year, but do not receive additional funding from the sponsor. Mm -hmm. And then a, an additional comment was, I don't think study activities can continue, though we are analyzing data during this time period. Yeah, so you can't, the parameters of no-cost extensions can depend on your funder. Um, and also how many no-cost extensions you can get depends on your funder. Uh, sometimes they will allow you, maybe if you're really close to a recruitment goal, to continue recruiting to meet that threshold goal, especially if it's, you know, in terms of getting power. Um, but often it is correct, you're not getting paid. so. The grant's the grant. If you had 150K for six years, that's all you get. If you're not done with analysis and can report out in that time period, 
you could go for an ill-cost extension, um, but no one's getting paid for the work. So um, uh, normally it's more for like a data analysis side of things. So especially maybe, at least in my experience, recruitment's not going great. Okay, well then instead of only rec like recruiting the first four years of four years of a five-year grant, we're gonna recruit through the all five years and then we're going for a no-cost extension at the end to do all the analysis. You know, and quite often I have seen uh, PIs go for a smaller grant to do a pilot study in order to get the data and the information they need to do a larger grant for um, a larger amount of funding to do their trial. So I've seen that happen too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. The CTSI have a coordinator community discussion board. I feel like there's a lot of times I have questions and I'm like, if I could just find another coordinator on campus who does it, they could help me. You know, I, I go to the, my coordinators on the same floor as me, but they're like, I don't know. I do a sponsor study and the sponsor just tells me what to do. And I'm like, Arr. you know, <laughs> and hopefully that was to be the goal of these sessions that, uh, you know, we don't have to talk about what's being presented. If there are any other concerns or questions that come up, um, you know, to reach out to discuss them. That being said, yes, whenever you have any questions, you're certainly welcome to reach out to the clinical trials office to ask questions. Yeah, uh, to we're more than happy, you no, know, to that's help. That's also a good idea. We could set one up as a discussion board. It's like, people can just throw. Yeah, I'm doing can, this. Is anyone else doing it? And then, right, then the question. someone can chime in. Maybe, they maybe do like a Teams channel. The only issue with that, and this is not directed towards anybody in particular, but the reliability of information that would be then put out. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So Quite often. Um, how can, who is, or how can we verify that that is actually accurate? Right. Yeah. Right, because sometimes uh, someone will think that something is required or it's a regulatory right. issue, and it's actually just, you know, um, their idea mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, just basic answer what should be done. Uh, best practices. Plus, it's, you know, all the FDA is, uh, their guidances. So sure. your interpretation and my interpretation and mm -hmm. the IRB's interpretation varies. IRB board members change and their mm -hmm. interpretations have changed. We have seen that. Uh, yeah, maybe we could do like a so, just- gotcha But it's a good idea. We'll, we'll think about that. A way that you could post questions. And yeah. someone's like, hey, like we're acknowledging your question. We're gonna verify. Right. And then we're gonna get back to you with it. Right. Yeah. So that's what we do within our own office because you know we have you know quite a few people and we don't always each other to talk so we'll kind of throw it out there the question to everyone yeah. and uh, you know get different ideas bouncing off people or get the correct idea or get you know um, no one knows email this person <laughs> right. right yeah or then you know right no one knows email this person or here's here's the regulatory link you know here's the IRB link or whatever yeah, and but so, even even institution wide things like ACRP has a community discussion yeah. board but that's for higher level stuff but like if I'm like you know, how do I schedule the true? How do I get research MRIs mm -hmm. on campus? It would be nice to have something that's MCW freighter children's focused. You know, and that's a great idea. And it's one of the things that we have been discussing in our educational meetings is that, you know, the, MC, the institution has their requirements as far as city training and safety training and bloodborne, you know, all of this stuff. This is what we need you to do, the IRB training. But what they, right now, they're, there really is no in the trenches yeah in the trenches education stuff. right yeah. this is how you do this uh this is how you set up you know your binder for using binders or this is how you schedule with the a true uh this is how you do this and that is definitely something that we're lacking and again that was one of the goals to set up this type of uh, of this presentation but i do think Quite, I mean, if we only present something once a year, and so if someone doesn't have any questions, they don't really want to wait a whole year right. for it to be discussed again or go look through the um, the past presentation. So I do think some type of message board would be, you know, a yeah. good idea. Well, we could discuss figuring out what okay. yeah, that. that. But that's yeah. thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Well, that's that's but until point. then, feel free to email. you know, right? You okay. can email us. Yeah. I mean, Shah has a lot of free time, so. <laughs> <laughs> There was a comment, another comment in the chat. Working in IITs, um, this person said, I found that, that establishing bi-weekly PI meetings has been extremely helpful when working with IITs. And um, if it's something that 
is not already in your routine. This is a great deal of, there's a great deal of change that occurs for IITs I've been a part of. I appreciate the relationship building and opportunities that IITs provide when working with PIs and other study team members. Yep. So yeah. if you can nail down right. those bi-weekly meetings. Yeah. yeah. And often it's IITs, depending on who your PI is, you know, they just might not, it might be their first time dabbling in human subject research or doing something this broad on their own that isn't sponsor driven or like first time being in charge of being in charge of a multi-site project. So I think also from the PI, there's a lot of nuance and things that they were not aware of going into when they decided to do an IIT. Like, oh, like, well, I have a collaborator down in Chicago and so they're going to be a site. I'm like, okay, well, I need regulatory documents. Like, are we doing a reliance agreement? Is this going to be two separate IRBs? How are we going to ensure we're all on the same protocol version? Like things that we would think of that they're like, oh, that's a lot of like, do we need a business agreement with them? Like how is funding going to occur? Like all these things that we, you just might not normally think of as a PI. So I think they also come to right. this like, oh, oh, this is bigger, but off a bit more than I can chew. Right. So I think make, being able, having the biweekly touch bases, or maybe you have like a all PI sub I meeting once a month and then every Friday we meet with the stats team and you know different things like that to make sure everyone's in alignment and try to come from a place of empathy that everyone kind of feels like a chicken with their head cut off <laughs> um, can be helpful. You know, and I did reach out to a number of people um, and even Dr. Google could help me. So if anyone has one, um, I could, would like to have, but I could not find um, an IIT checklist uh, the steps that need to be done. You know, this is what you do. This is what you do. Um, again, I checked with the people I know who have uh, you know, a lot of IITs and they're like, no, we don't have one, but that's a good idea. You know, okay, well, then let's create one. So if anyone does have one they're willing to share, great. Otherwise, we will uh, work on trying to create one. I can send you our lab one. We have Perfect. a study startup checklist for our lab. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it might just be a matter of combining a bunch of different it, exactly, exactly. Right. Which is what I just did recently when I emailed Sarah about, I think another component that I think would be helpful for us coordinators to learn is how to close one of these investigator initiated studies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I have a lot that are just like lingering out there and I'm like, PI, is you doing anything with me? Like once they get all their data, they just kind of forget about it. It's like, right. but there's all these things that need to happen. And what are those things? Right. Like, right. How do we do it? the sponsor site and get, and I've been told, well, yeah, leave it open because I'm still looking at the data. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, you don't have to leave it open to look at the data. And then you like, and then it gets audited and the coordinator is no longer there and right. no one knows what happened during this study. Exactly. And, yep. Yeah. It's just a mess. Yeah. Any other questions or advice? Yes. When have the close <laughs> Yes, Kelly. <laughs> I agree. The ACRP Wisconsin chapter is trying to work on a little mini conference to address closing studies. So that's going to be our next topic to watch for. What was Kelly, Kelly's comment? I didn't know. No, just to, how to close up an AIT. Oh, okay. You just walk away from it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Right. I'm like, wait, no. <laughs> so the PI leaves the uh, institution, doesn't close it out before it leaves. Yeah. It's like, oh. Which MCW. HRPP just sent out some good SOPs yes. on that. Yes, they did. Um, but I kind of wanted more on like, okay, the PI is still here, but now this study is just sitting here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions or comments? Well, if there aren't any more about I. I